Hello, everyone. Hello, fellow systematic geekologists. Welcome to another episode of Systematic Geekology. I am super excited about this particular episode because we're hopping in a time machine and we're going way back, way back to the 1900s, where cartoons and sci fi, you can make the case, was at their peak. And so we're going to talk about one of my favorite cartoons of all time, uh, Space Ghost. <laughs> and, and folks, just in case you're listening and not watching, we're not in front of a live studio audience. I got two friends with me uh, to geek out and to talk about one of my favorite cartoons of all time, Space Ghost. And so I'm here with Christian and with uh, someone he's very close to, Chip. And uh, yeah, welcome guys. Glad you're a part of this episode. And Chip is is an expert when it comes to Hanna Barbera cartoons and Space Ghost. Even ran a website uh, documenting the history and the lore and the, each episode. And I'll tell you, I confess, when I was getting ready for this particular episode about Space Ghost, I um, was watching some of the the cartoons on YouTube you can pull up, but then also had Chip's uh, website up that Christian shared with me, kind of going through and looking at this. And, and this this particular cartoon. We'll get in the history in a minute. Like it, it didn't. It was like a year old. It only lasted a year, but there's so much involved. So many villains, so many planets, so many sci-fi lores. I I can't wait to get into this. But before we do that, let's talk about. Uh, what we're geeking out on and where we are today. Christian, where are you? How are you? What are you geeking out on? I'm still up here in Louisville, Kentucky for seminary, and uh, I am geeking out right now. I went up last weekend to go see my brother and sister-in-law and niece and went to the library there now having a sale, which is very bad for me because I'm going to buy as much as I want to already hoard the immense amount of movies and books that I have. <laughs> and I found all three uh movies of the thing for a dollar so i got the original thing from another world 1982 and the 2011 version so i've been geeking out on those nice nice chip where are you how are you what have you been geeking out on lately so i'm in the uh, great city of denver north carolina and uh lately i have been replaying on xbox 360 arkham asylum with oh, yeah. Batman and nice. finished that one and just finished recently Arkham City. So I'll probably go ahead and work on the next one. But I've uh, been watching some uh, some of the campy episodes of Brave and the Bold animated that came out a few years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Catching up with those. Uh, which Space Ghost is on. Which Sorry, Space Ghost uh, does make an appearance, by the way. Oh, uh, really? I didn't know yes. that. What episode's mm -hmm. that? I need to hunt that one down. One of the stingers at the beginning. Yeah, it's just a, like one of the little five-minute bumpers they have at the beginning of the episode. Uh, okay. But I think it's in the third season, if I'm not mistaken, because I haven't gotten to the third season yet. So, And then uh, I've been watching Ahsoka. Is that mm -hmm. how you say it? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't watched the finale yet, so don't ruin it for me, guys. Sorry. We won't. We won't. <laughs> but uh, I've enjoyed it. I, I see it's gotten a lot of criticism, but I just don't – I don't know what people want. I mean, <laughs> yes, I, I like it. I like that take. I like that take, Jeff, a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Star Wars fans can be a um, prickly uh, bunch, a group of of geeks. So, uh, and I, I consider myself in in that that part too. But uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I I don't think you can get um, as peak Star Wars as Episode Five in Ahsoka. Man, man alive that was good 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 stuff yeah i um hello everyone i'm will rose i'm still in chapel hill uh, um, i'm geeking out though over the next couple of weeks i'm gonna do some traveling with my family who is on fall break and then gonna go to theology beer camp and then i'm coming back home and systematic ecology is gonna have a presence not only at theology beer camp but also north carolina comic-con and i've been emailing back and forth the comic-con directors and panels and we're gonna have a presence to do a lot a live podcast there. I think Joshua and Kevin and TJ are going to be a part of that. So pretty excited about that. And another thing I'm geeking out on as I was going through YouTube, looking at old space ghost cartoons, I found Blade Runner Radio. 
Yes, if you it's just exactly what you think it is. It is Blade Runner ambient music that you can just hit play and hear some of the sounds of Blade Runner and music. There's no talking, a little background is some sci-fi flyovers of futuristic cities with spaceships. Uh, but if you're having a hard time falling asleep and you're a Blade Runner fan, you can put Blade Runner ambient music on and fall asleep to that. And I've done that over the last couple of evenings. So that is what I'm geeking out on. So let's let's get to uh, the episode. It is time to talk about Space Ghosts and all his lore that goes in with, with his place in terms of cartoons and Saturday morning cartoons and Hanna-Barbera. Um, you know, Hanna, Hanna-Barbera, uh, for those out there who aren't familiar with Space Ghost or aren't familiar with the, the lineup of Hanna-Barbera cartoons, uh, just to name a few, just to name a few, here we go. We have the Flintstones, Scooby-Doo, Jetsons, Yogi Bear, Tom and Jerry, and then we're getting into my wheelhouse of super friends, Johnny Quest, Herculoids, Thundar the Barbarian, and then I think they're at the Mount Rushmore of Hanna-Barbera um, cartoons. You have Space Ghost, and and so, um, you know, I, I was going to go a little bit of the history of this. We don't necessarily want to read off like a Wikipedia page, but we do want to share a little bit of background about what this cartoon is and uh, the pattern that he had. Chip, I'm going to let you take the lead here. What What is some of the history of uh, Space Ghost and when it debuted and how long it lasted. Then there was a couple reboots in there and reiterations. Some of you uh, 90s kids may remember Space Ghost Coast to Coast, uh, the Adult Swim late night talk show host on Cartoon Network. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the episode. But right now we're going to talk about Space Ghost as it came out in the 1960s and 70s and 80s. Chip, uh, what brief synopsis. It's history. Okay, so Hanna-Barbera had had a pretty good success with Johnny Quest, and they mm -hmm. wanted to get into the superhero realm. Uh, the live-action Batman series was on, and uh, they had hired a guy named Alex Toth. A lot of people say Toth, but it's actually Toth, mm -hmm. uh, to do a lot of designs for them over the years. Uh, and uh, Fred Silverman, which was one of the producers uh, for Hanna-Barbera, came in with a copy of Life magazine, and had a picture of Batman and Robin on the front. And he said, that's it. That's what I want Space Ghost to look like. Nice. And uh, Alex Toth told him, said, you know that space is black, right? And if we put him in a black <laughs> dark costume, he won't show up. So that's why they went to the white colors and then kind of outlined him in a white uh, rim. Uh, but Space Ghost uh, debuted in September of 1966. He actually ran for two seasons, uh, went all the way to 1968. Um, gotcha. and, um, so he was a, a big hit. Now I was only a year old at the time, so I don't remember that at all. Um, but, uh, it was a big hit and then that followed along and allowed them to make several other superhero that we may speak of as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, now each episode of Space Ghost, even though there is like twenty episodes and then a couple of seasons, but in within each episode, it had its own kind of seven minute story arc. Did they have like a three parter in each one of these episodes? Is that something that was going on there? So it was actually two different characters. So you had Space Ghost, and then you had Dino Boy in the Lost Valley. Gotcha. So Space Ghost would be a seven minute episode. Then it would be a Dino Boy seven-minute episode, and then they'd finish up with a second. Usually, that had nothing to do with the first episode uh, to finish the program out. Yeah, and and when I was a kid, I you know I I tend to do my timeline. Um, when when star wars hit <laughs> i look at you know i'm a christian so i do base history and time off like before christ um ad you know the birth of christ uh, but i but in my fandom and sci-fi fandom i do like judge things between after 1977 and before 1977 uh bsw before star wars and asw <laughs> after star wars and so these episodes the sci-fi cartoon happened bsw uh, a decade before and it really is kind of that campy 
um, kind of Bronze Age, Silver Age comic book superhero. You get a mainstay superhero with uh, some teenage sidekicks and a cute animal, and they have the adventure of the week. And so they had a full story arc within a seven minute uh, time frame of an introduction with the narrator that lets you know where you were in space. And then uh, they introduced a villain. And most of the time, uh, Jace and Jan and Blip would get captured or kidnapped. And then Space Ghost has to come in and save the day and does. And then, boom, we're ready for the next one. And each week they had, um, or each episode has his own villain that they had to dream up of these worlds and galaxies and different aliens looking differently and, and superpowers. I think in one episode, maybe the early ones, they had a space sharks. Yep. Yep, they had space pirates. <laughs> they had mind control. They had a, a living, uh, uh, an, an alien race that were bound down and worshiping a computer. You know, a little foreshadowing there of what's going to happen later on in the 2000s. <laughs> but uh, it, um, all that stuff is there. And so you can go back and watch these. And uh, man, it's using the same sound effects and some of the same music that I was hearing in Super Friends when I was a kid in front of Saturday morning cartoons as well. I was like, that's the same music that I heard in Super Friends <laughs> and all that. So, so it was all there packed in to, to these um, episodes. Christian, how about you? where where do you how are you i know how you were introduced to this through your dad but like what um where what was your first experience with them and what what captured your imagination with these episodes of space ghost i would have been very young well you'd say like six or seven maybe even before that and dad was you know taping them on tv and you know he would always show it to me the same way that's how i would watch the spider-man animated series batman X-Men, he would tape, you know, Space Ghost, Herculoids, Birdman, so on and so forth. Yeah. And I was in love, like little kid, superheroes are my thing. And just keeping on, like for Space Ghost himself, it was that idea of this guy just, I, I like how you brought the contrast earlier, of like the blackness of space versus the whiteness of his outfit. Like he makes an impression on screen compared to his surroundings. And he's got his power bands, you know, just solving crimes across the galaxy. It was a blast. I mean, even on as time went on, you get to the 80s cartoon, you get to the 2005 uh, comic book miniseries that Joe Kelly did. Yeah. That, in my opinion, is darker and edgier done correctly. Mm -hmm. And his brief appearance on uh, Brave and the Bold. Like, I love Space Ghost. I love seeing him on screen. Yeah. Yeah. And so he he is kind of like a Green Lantern kind of um, character in the sense that he is he's a space cop. He's a loner, uh, but he has these sidekicks, these twin sidekicks, uh, Jace and Jan and their cute um, uh, helper monkey who's there to help along getting shenanigans and doing monkey things and bringing some comic relief. And they definitely laugh. It's not dark and gritty. He's not Batman where he's always brooding all the time. I guess we'll talk about 2005 comic book series. Um, and it, it kind of his backstory a little bit, bit later at the end, but, but, but yeah, they're, they're traveling through. He's from a ghost, the ghost planet. That's the name of the planet. Ghost planet. Of course, space ghost is from ghost planet. And then he's on the phantom cruiser with that's his spaceship that they're going around and he has power bands that can shoot out lasers sometimes as power beams as fire sometimes as ice uh, it has different it has three buttons on each power band i've only seen him press maybe one or two of them i don't know maybe there's a different ways you can correct me <laughs> if I'm, I'm wrong um he has the uh inviso power they they all of uh jace and jan and blip and space ghost can turn invisible of course if you're a ghost some of your paper superpowers is going to be you can turn invisible and disappear appear from uh, whatever villain you're facing as a way to trick them or figure out what's going on around you. I do have a question though, Chip, maybe you can help me. Um, some episodes, Jason Jan have kind of jetpacks on that they can show them flying. Sometimes they don't and they're flying, but space ghost flies. Sometimes he just has that cape. Uh, how do they fly without the Phantom Cruiser? What have we got? So I'm, ass I'm assuming is, costume itself has built in flight capability uh because I, when i was doing my research uh it said that he can fly actually faster with his costume than he can in the phantom cruiser gotcha I, i've never knew known that but <laughs> that's what the research said yeah. uh now do you want to know a list of all of the effects of the power bands oh i've got a, i've got a list 
One hundred percent. Yep. All yep, right. Exactly. That's why we're here. So, do, in my research of doing this, so mm-hmm. we have a reversing force ray, hypno force, willpower, destroyer ray, force ray, superpower, destructo ray, pile driver ray, energy force, stun ray, heat force, megatron force, magna ray, heat ray, <laughs> freeze ray, freeze force, heat intensifier ray, sonic vibro ray, whip ray. Uh, frost ray, freeze field, scatter ray, power rays, antimatter ray, electroshock ray, battering ram ray is one of my favorite. Uh, <laughs> locking ray, hammer ray, megatron ray, energy ray, magnetic ray, laser beam, ice force field, force shield, force field, viso wall, super speed, hyperspeed, and the ability to create a time warp. These are combined. Po- oh, yes, yeah, actually has combined powers. He can mash both sides of the uh buttons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Heat and energy ray at the same time, force field and energy power, stun ray and force energy power, and then my favorite, raising the power to five over five. So I guess we save that for the worst. <laughs> yeah, if you can raise it, if you can raise the power. And these are like not real bulky power bands on on no. their wrists, like all within, like it looks like paper thin around his wrist. He's got some buttons. He pushes it and it has all those things together. Um, so I always try to figure out how did he remember every combination for those that I just yeah. listed? Yeah. Yeah. He, he is definitely the older, wiser. He's the space goes leading his sidekicks. He's been around the block uh, a few times and, and knows what's going on. But I, you know, just as a kid, when I was watching these things and my capture, my imagination, these cartoons, I would go out after Saturday morning cartoons and go pretend I was these superheroes, whether it's from super friends or Thundar or star Wars, I'd have my imagination playtime where action figures. And, and I definitely wrapped some, um, uh, paper towel, cardboard around, uh, empty paper <laughs> cardboard around my wrist and colored power bands. And I was out in the yard running through the sand dunes, battling, uh, villains and, uh, evil aliens with my power bands shooting lasers out of my wrist. So I, all those things you listed, I don't know if that was all in my head at the time, but definitely <laughs> the imagination was running wild. Fantastic. Fan. Fantastic. Now, now I, it, I wanted to yeah, touch on ahead. something you said earlier too. Sure that it seemed to be Jan and Jason blip getting in trouble, which is true. Mm -hmm. But a lot of time, instead of space goes saving them blip, I think it seems like every other episode saves Mm -hmm. him. Yes. Because he turns invisible and is able to sneak around and, you know, let space goes free when he's caught and, it's amazing yep. how many times that happens. Yeah, the, and, and I love that kind of unassuming, small, unnoticed animal that, oh, sorry, um, un, unassumed uh, small animal similar to the hobbit or the the mustard seed or, you know, the Jesus uses the small and insignificant is often that which is the greatest or, or, or what happens there. Um, I, I think happens within this cartoon. There's a, there is that pattern of, of them getting the trouble and, but it's the, it's the small monkey who turns invisible, who can use his tail or do something that they can't do to save, save the day. So not just there for, for comic relief, uh, but actually as a function within the seven minute narrative and story arc that they're trying, they're trying to, trying to use. Um, Christian, what, what, watching these, is there a particular planet or story arc or a villain that sticks out for you as, as memorable or one that you kind of latch on to? A storyline is definitely like the near finale of the original series where he goes and actually meets the other superheroes, except for Birdman, I think, is and the Galaxy Tree are like the only ones I can think of he doesn't meet that would be the regular ones, but he meets my tour. And you know, uh also yeah. Moby Dick as well when they had that <laughs> cartoon, right? Dad? Yeah. Is yes. that one of them? Yeah, yeah. Yes. And Herculoids and Shazam and teaming up with them because I'm always a sucker for team up issues. Like I've said mm-hmm. it before on the show, my favorite Marvel series of all time is Marvel Team Up. It doesn't matter how terrible the stories are. I just want to see Spider-Man and the human torch, you know, teaming up with the thing or whoever shows up that day. And that appeals to me even now. Like I can watch those episodes and go, yes, this is exactly what I want. I'm still that little seven year old watching it for the first time. But like yeah. villains, like, I mean, it's hard to beat Zorak. I mean, uh, someone who doesn't like bugs naturally, having him as a villain, well, you've earned my trust. Get us a bad guy right there. 
and how evil and maniacal he was and all the devastation he would cause. And we can get into the comics later about how, just how even more evil he is there with the way he abuses his own race to get what he does. He's kind of like almost a nihilist uh, before the Annihilation comic event came out. Yeah. 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 You can, you can see, you know, again, this is before Star Wars, but there's still in the zeitgeist of the day, sci-fi pulp storytelling exploration of science and the universe and what could what could these planets inhabit if there are a lot of planets revolving around store uh, stars out there in the universe and they could have life what could they be like or look like or be different than us and and they're wrestling perhaps their world is wrestling with the same things that we're wrestling with in terms of good good versus evil and we need cops and authorities to help police officers to to help um you know, uh, mediate and navigate uh, people who are trying to abide by the law and those who are trying to break it. And so why wouldn't that happen in space and out on a planet as well? And so they're dreaming up all the different ways you could you could share these kind of stories of of that. And so I that was so appealing to me. Every single episode goes. And of course, there's reoccurring characters and there's team ups with other Hanna-Barbera um cartoon heroes and and team ups so that's kind of fun um but yeah the imagination that goes behind of in the writer's room or thinking up how to do the animation of these different um space aliens and planets and and science and what it could be or not be uh really really appeals to me chip for you what what uh as someone who studied this long time and knows this really really well a big part of um kind of your geek life and fandom is there a particular story arc or planet or or um, villain well, that's I, one of your favorites that sticks out? I would agree with Christian. It's the Council of Doom. Uh, it actually was the kind of the series premiere the second year. Uh, instead of having a Dino Boy episode in the middle, it had a three-arc story the first week and then another three-arc story the next week. And as Christian stated, what they were trying to do is introduce the 1967 characters. So uh, the Council of Doom comes together and it's Space Ghost's biggest rogue gallery, uh, Zorak, Brack, Spider-Woman, <laughs> Metallus, and I'm missing somebody. There were six Is of them. Creature oh, King? Uh, Creature Motar? King. And Motar, yeah, and Motar. And so they're all trying to kill Space Ghost and they're trying different ways. So he gets knocked into the past through a time portal and he meets Mitor and Mitor helps him defeat the monster. And then space goes able to teleport himself back. And then Jan and Jace are captured and sent to earth. Uh, and then Moby Dick and Tom and Tub and Scooby have to save them. And then uh, I can't remember who sends them to the Herculoids world, but then the Herculoids have to help him. And then they end up in the past where Shazan is and then Shazan. So I'm like Christian. I love team ups and, yeah, uh, you know, true. plus it's a six, six arc story, six part story, but it was used to introduce those characters that were debuting like the next week. So, mm -hmm. or at the same time. So that was probably mine. And just the whole thing about space goes in general. Uh, I was a big Batman fan when I grew up. Uh, I think my mom said one of my first words ever was Batman Nice. Uh, as a child. And so I look at Space Ghost as kind of like Batman in outer space is what mm -hmm. I look at him. Mm -hmm. um, and so sci-fi sci has always been a big, I've been a huge Star Trek fan and a Star Wars fan. I mean, I love him. And, you know, the Space Ghost being a hero in outer space. Uh, and then he's got all these cool gadgets and he's got a great ship. and all these powers and all these great villains. I mean, it's just, you know, it just made me fall, fall in love with him. But like I said, I didn't get to see it in 66 because I was just a infant at the time. So the first right. time I can remember watching space ghost was probably around 1976 NBC put him and Frankenstein jr. Together <laughs> to, to have a show. And yeah. so they would show a couple episodes of space ghost and like one episode of Frankenstein jr. Uh, and then I can remember uh, in the 80s, that's when they put together Hanna-Barbera's World of Super Adventure. They would have the Fantastic Four because that was a Hanna-Barbera show in like 67. And then all the, all the uh, characters we've talked about already. And it'd be an hour long show. And I'd just be sitting there enthralled. I'm in high school and I'm still enthralled in this. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 
And then, of course, when Cartoon Network came out, I was like in heaven because, you know, for years and years and years, you didn't see these shows. And uh, they came out with Super Adventures. And I just remember, man, I was wanting cable so bad. We didn't have cable where I was. So I went and bought a satellite dish, you know, one of the uh, uh, first to get uh, direct TV. Mm-hmm. So we could so we could watch all these things because we didn't have cable in the country where we where we lived at the time. And so, you know, it was just great to be able to relive and, and watch these characters that I grew up with, you know, again. Yeah. Yeah. All you 20 somethings out there, you know, where what, let's just say there was a day when when you couldn't just stream everything, pull it up on your phone or find it on YouTube. You had to wait for reruns or look for uh, VHS or do DVD when when Cartoon Network uh, emerged and started playing some of the retro cartoons alongside the newer cartoons you would find us us kids who grew up in the seventies and eighties, man, we wanted, we wanted to see that stuff uh, again. And, um, I, I huddled around the TV every Saturday morning for Saturday morning cartoons. And then that was part of, part of my deal. And so I, I loved the super friends and I loved, um, when, when space ghost and the Herculoids, they all teamed up and, and came together, uh, with those mashups. And I love those comic books too. The, the team books are my favorite. Cause I love to see how, uh, they play off one another individually. They're great superheroes. They have great adventures, but when they come together and have to work together as a team uh, to to fight against a threat greater than themselves individually, that's very appealing to me. And so seeing the big crossover events with Space Ghost and others was was pretty fun. And, and I'm a Batman fan too. I'm a big outer space and sci-fi fan. So yeah, you put Batman in space and have some adventures with his rogues gallery as well, then then I'm 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 there. And I love the campiness of it. I love what they're trying to do. Uh, super, super fun. Um, what, what do you think, Christian, is, is the appeal? What, what makes, we've talked about ways that we think this is special, but what, what is the enduring and enduring like factor of space goes? What can we learn from space ghosts in terms of systematic ecologists? We, we go a little deeper philosophy, theology. There's not a whole lot of philosophy and theology within these things, but, um, but, but there could be. And so what, what would you say stands out for you if we were going to go a little deeper about some of the messaging and, how this could apply to our own personal lives and faith. I think it's that whole, like he has no real support that we see in the original series. And yet he himself has taken on a very thankless task of watching over the galaxy, protecting Hmm. people from, you know, we don't really know how the economics or political situation works in this world, but it doesn't seem like there's anyone who's really working as hard as him to make sure you know, this planet doesn't get invaded by Zorak or Brack or what have you here. And yet he does it. It doesn't seem like he gets paid for it. Like no one's like having a space ghost parade for him, but like he's mm. doing it <laughs> because it's the right thing to do. And that's something that we can all learn when it comes to our own spiritual lives. It's like, we don't do things for accolades. I don't do things to earn a jewel on one of my crowns in heaven. Mm. I do it because God commands do this because it is who it is, what I would do. So obviously it doesn't really seem like Space Ghost is a Christian from what we can tell here. But at the end of the day, that process can still be laid down at us. Like we should act in that same manner. Our job is to look after others, no matter the cost. Yeah, the virtues are there. It is it is kind of retro and throwback, this idea of duty, that that you're called to something and, and you you have a badge or a calling or an honor system is this this is what I'm gonna do. We don't get a full backstory in the cartoon in terms of you know, we'll get that in a comic a little bit later on, but like he um you know, why, why is he part of the space force? He seems like a lone ranger and yet he has some sidekicks. He has some friends around him. He meets other people in the galaxy who are helping him that, that it, it does take a team. It does take more than that, but yet he carries with them this kind of virtuous, um, um, code of ethics that goes with him to make sure one of my favorite quotes as I was watching this, there was this renegade um, comet on the loose. You know, I, I think I, I forgot what the name of the, the deadly comic, Comet is the name of the episode. At some point, the comet's chasing down things and burning them up. And in space goes, that's the most determined comet I've ever seen. And I'm like, have you seen other determined comets? <laughs> uh, like, uh, it's the most uh, determined. But yeah, he's like, he doesn't know where it's going or why it's doing, but he's going to investigate. He's going to make sure that other people aren't hurt by this thing. And he calls on Kid Comet to come help him do this, to work as, as a team. And so, yeah, you draw from that kind of virtue, code of ethics, 
this is what guides my life, my moral compass to guide me to do what's right. And, and hopefully at the end of the day, um, evil will be defeated until it rises up again. Uh, Chip, how about you? What's the enduring factor here in the message that Space Ghost gives us? Well, obviously he has a high morality. Um, he's just very cookie cutter kind of person. I mean, he's kind of, you know, just an average guy. It sounds like that just has superpowers. Um, yeah. I like the fact that he's taken in, uh, you know, we find out in the comics that Jan and Jace are orphans. It doesn't really explain it in the show how he ends up with them, but mm -hmm. you know, obviously he's taken in two kids to raise them as his own. Um, so as an adoption, we always, you know, hear God adopting us into his family. Mm. Uh, so, and then obviously he's an animal lover, you know, <laughs> uh, a blip. I never explains where we got blip from, but, uh, you know, obviously he's one of space Ghost's closest friends as well. Um, but, uh, just, it's just the whole morality of space ghost. I mean, he always tries to do the right things and he lot like Batman too. He never kills. Right. Right. He only stuns and then distributes to, you know, intergalactic prison. You know, mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, some of those themes that are there and what I like in the comics is too, this idea of, of family. There's, there's blood family and there's adopted family and then there's family that you become as you journey together and struggle together and fight for what's right together. And so what the idea that, that uh, family sticking together, how do you grow into that friendship partnership, teamwork, um, family is a big part of that. So, so yeah, you do kind of, and, and there's some lighthearted stuff. They're not afraid to laugh. They're in the midst of a dangerous universe out of control, chaos and villains everywhere. And yet something will happen and they'll laugh and, and like, yeah, isn't that funny? Or blip does something or they other do things that they're not afraid, afraid to laugh and, and, and go through space and use their gifts for what they have for the greater good of, of the universe. So yeah, I, I love this cartoon for, for folks out there, who are listening that aren't familiar with the Hanna Barbera cartoons or Space Ghost? Yeah, hop on, hop on YouTube and pull some up and watch and and have fun with it. I, I think it's fantastic. Um, yeah, so we can't not talk about Space Ghost without talking about Space Ghost Coast to Coast. A chip, I know uh, this might be is <laughs> hard. Uh, Christian, I don't know about you and where you fall on that, but I will say that when that came out on Cartoon Network in 1994, I'm at the tail end of college, getting ready to go into seminary. Um, I'm, I'm working at summer camp with a bunch of counselors. We're watching, um, our, our sense of humor is, is growing and budding and stretching the boundaries. So when space goes coast to coast comes on and it has this kind of like, um, it's a late night talk show, weird, awkward moments where space ghost is interviewing musicians and movie stars and making them feel awkward with with awkward pauses and his uh, Zorak and Brack and Multar as kind of his studio helpers. Um, for me, I, at the time, and I still, I was going back and went down another rabbit hole of watching some of the interviews uh, where he interviews Jim Carrey when he was playing the mask. It, um, I, I was laughing. I was giggling. Uh, Brack, some of the uh, music that Brack does, um, uh, when he says, never trust a monkey, go back and listen to that one. I I laughed out loud again because I even had that music CD, Space Goes Coast to Coast music CD, where I play songs from the TV show. I remember going on youth trips with my middle school and high school youth. I was a part-time youth director playing some of these songs. Some of the kids were laughing, some weren't. It was pretty weird, uh, but that was my sense of humor at the time. Chip and Christian, what's your relationship to Space Goes Coast to Coast? Again, no geek shaming. Everything's on the table. No wrong or right answer. What do you What do you feel about it? <laughs> I remember seeing that for the first time. It was like when staying up late when I wasn't supposed to be, you mm. know, trying to catch like the uh, uncut version of Dragon Ball Z that would appear on <laughs> Toonami late at night. And then every now and then Space Goes Coast to Coast would come on and it's like, oh, Space Goes, cool. And then I, I wasn't the proper age to understand what they're attempting to do yeah. with this. Yeah. And now mm -hmm. when I do look back, because I, I have rewatched the whole thing since then, and it's just not for me. I'm not a Dada kind of anti-humor kind of person when it comes to like that being really not the only source of the jokes they come up with in the show, but it's like right. a major force as opposed to something like, you know, Harvey Birdman. I, I laugh more at Harvey Birdman because yeah. it takes a deep knowledge of the characters they're making fun of and parodying mm -hmm. from the old Hanna-Barbera shows that 
you see they do have an appreciation for them. So Coast to Coast doesn't really, uh, it's not something designed for my sense of humor. I'll just put it that way. Right. Yeah. Chip, how about you? <laughs> okay. So I will confess I've never watched an episode from start to finish. I've only seen <laughs> clips. Uh, but if it gets people interested in Space Ghost and trying to find out who this guy is and gets them to the original, uh, you know, I was all for it. Like I said, I wasn't a hater. It just wouldn't, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. Uh, and, and one of the reasons that I did the whole website in 1998 is when I did it. So, you know, the internet's just kind of still in its infancy, I guess, even right. in late nineties. Um, but I, I looked for something about space ghost and I could not find anything except space ghost coast to coast. Right. Well, mm -hmm that just didn't sit well with me. I was like, all right. So if these people love space ghost coast to coast, maybe they'll actually love the space ghost, the original space ghost. So that's why I created the original space ghost fact. And so started with that and just went from, you know, beginning to end. And, uh, one thing I got to do, I got to find a web hosting site and get that back up. Cause I, I yeah. mean, it just, I mean, it's just got tons of information on it. Of all the Hanna Barbera super TV heroes, I mean, it's, it's just, it was just, I mean, I put a lot of hours and time into that. And, you know, it, it'd be great for people to be able to see that. I mean, I know you can get on Wayback. Is it Wayback Machine, Christian? Is that what? Yes. How you get to it? And if you type in uh, original Space Ghost Fact, then it'll bring it up. Or you can type in Hanna Barbera super TV heroes and it'll bring up like mm -hmm. the whole list of characters. But that's the reason I created that whole website is I wanted people to know who the real Space Ghost was. Nice. So. Nice. Yeah, I I was uh, Christian uh, sent a link to me to that website and I, I would totally support uh, you um, rehauling it and putting it back together and putting it out there again, I, I think is a, a wealth of knowledge when it comes to that or hopefully maybe Joshua could put in the the show notes uh the a link to the wayback machine and, and some of that thing because i do think you're right like even when i went on wiki to go look and see a little bit um about the history of space ghost when they had it there they're like if you're looking for space ghost coast to coast go here if you're looking for space ghost the animated tv show go here if you're looking for the comic go here. so they even like yeah people are looking for different ways but i really think space Ghost coast to coast was a was a game changer when it came to adult swim and how they did their own um humor and the kind of using old school cartoon characters as parody and characters on his own. There's, uh, there was a lot of things that developed in the early two thousands that, that, um, adult swim used because of the success of space Ghost coast to coast, trying to capture, uh, the same success of that. And then it evolved to other, other things going on now in terms of adult swim. So there's a whole history there when it comes to space ghost and space goes coast to coast and it's humor. And we you know, just as our different fandoms are different, all our sense of humors are different too. I mean, golly, Joseph day and I had an argument about whether we like Will Ferrell and elf or not. And I think it's one of the greatest Christmas movies of all time. And he's like, no, not for me. I find it extremely annoying. And you're, we're allowed to have both of those <laughs> opinions in the same right. way goes with the other things that that goes that we geek out on so that's what we try to do here at systemic geekology um yeah so let's talk briefly about um you know, i'm a big comic book geek Let, let's talk that would be my recommendation is if you like the cartoon you have fun with that um back in i think it was 2005 dc did a limited six issue series of space ghost and it's it's not necessarily the light-hearted hanna-barbera cartoon it goes into its background origin and and the art is is fantastic so joe kelly is the the author and then there it is um chip has up on our youtube page the single issues my i have some single issues buried in my boxes somewhere i went to go find it but it would take a long time to dig through those boxes but i'm going to sort through my comics and and give away three fourths of my comics but uh in the one fourth that i'm keeping I'm keeping the Space Ghost uh, limited series for sure. How do you pronounce the artist's name? What's the artist's name on that? Ariel Oliveira. Ola. Olivetti. Olivetti. I don't know. I'm, I'm, Olivetti. Yeah, but man, it's like painted Alex Ross kind of pictures, uh, and the covers are fantastic. It is um, so so good. Um, Christian, what's what's some of the background, kind of the story that they fill in the gaps in terms of the Space Ghost story there and the story, if you can remember? 
Yeah, it's essentially our origin story for Space Ghost. Do we find that he is, uh, you know, married with a, a wife who is having a child and he's betrayed by one of his bosses, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've read it. Mm -hmm. And it's his journey ending up on it on the ghost planet and then figuring out, okay, how do I get revenge? And it, you start that story from that very dark and edgy, like, oh, I've been wrong, so I'm going to go back and hurt the world it's a very kind of punisher start at the very beginning and then along yeah. the way as things are revealed about the rest of the galaxy the zorak is starting to assault worlds and he adopts jason jan and finding okay i i'm bent on revenge like but i can't let that control me but this guy does still need to be stopped and i'm the one who's going to be able to do it and until we learn in this one like zorak kind of dies like how many times in the original series <laughs> if i remember correctly from spaceships explain well this explains how he's able to keep surviving in that he essentially treats his race as a hive mind to where he can mm -hmm. just take over someone and he's the new zorak after that that's a very evil thing for a villain to do it's very well done mm -hmm. and it eventually comes with space ghost like getting not his revenge but protecting in the justice way of stopping his former boss from killing more people and stopping zorak's assault from like essentially uh, it's an annihilation wave if anyone's ever read the annihilation event from marvel yeah that's going to take out all life in the galaxy if he doesn't do it and then he becomes the space ghost we all know and love nice chip anything in there you feel in you had the comics with you you've read them what yeah it's it's a, so, it's a good run uh, yeah it's definitely uh it's kind of like a, a dark knight returns punisher kind of feel to mm -hmm. it at the beginning um mm -hmm. You've got Space Ghost that's uh, in our, he's in an intergalactic police force already. Uh, he gets recruited into, I think you pronounce it the Eidolon something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he finds out on their first mission, they're not what they appear to be. Uh, they're more like judge, jury, and executioner. And not only that, but whatever spoils are left, they take them. And so they're like dirty cops, basically. Right. And uh, he wants to expose them and uh, they show up at his house and kidnap him and his wife and basically kill his wife in front of him and his unborn. I don't know if the child was born yet, maybe Not an yet. unborn child. Mm -hmm. And then uh, throw him on the ghost planet, uh, knowing that nobody would ever find him, uh, beat him up real bad. And so just leave him for dead. And uh, he's found by a character called Salomon, who is the lone survivor of the ghost planet. Uh, and you find out that Salomon is the one who created the weapons that basically destroyed his entire world. Mm. And he tries to tell Space Ghost, or, or his name is actually Thaddeus Bach. We find that yep. out. Yep. Uh, now, on Space Ghost Coast to Coast, he was Tad Ghostel. Uh, and didn't he have an evil twin brother named Chad Ghostul? I think. Um, yeah, probably did. Probably did. Right. So, uh, so anyway, his name is Thaddeus Bach and he gets ready to commit suicide and Salomon talks him out of it and tells him his story and then shows him the, uh, Phantom Cruiser shows yeah. him the costume shows him the, uh, power bands and says, mm -hmm. look, you, you've got choice. You can use these uh, for justice and mercy and protection of the galaxy, or you can use them solely for revenge. Hmm. And so he starts out on his mission. He's like, I'm going to kill these people. Well, he does end up killing two, the first two characters that beat him up. But when he gets to the leader of it and going through all the things that Christian said with uh, Zorak, he ends up depositing him to the organization that's responsible for that organization and says, look, here's the deal. I'm not going to do anything to you guys as long as y'all clean it up. If y'all don't clean it up, I'll be back. And that's kind of the end of the story. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, that's so good. And, and yeah, I mean, that, that'll preach, uh, you know, in terms of, again, the great power comes great responsibility here. I'm giving you these tools. What are you going to use them for, uh, for revenge, for evil or for good to make the world right? Um, uh, you, how are you going to use your gifts? And, and so I think, yeah, Can I good, say one good thing? story art. Sure. Uh, so what actually changes him is he sees a vision of his wife and child. And she tells him how disappointed she is in him. And from that moment, he kind of, you know, comes full circle and changes his philosophy because he feels like he's disappointing her memory. 
Nice. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. And at so the yeah, end of the what, story, and at the end of the story, he sees another vision of him, and she tells him how proud she is of him. I'm going back to read this story arc. Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, if you watch these cartoons on their own on YouTube and you're like, oh, so campy is 1960s, 1970s. But then it's like, yeah, if you want to get a little bit more more real, let's let's go in there and read read this uh, comp book. Resurgent comp books were starting to make a comeback in in the mid 2000s, um, 2005. And so they they were really flooding in some some good story arcs and, and bringing some people back in and, and, a, and a lot of fun. So so has there ever been rumors? Like I know there was a rumor there for a while that, uh, Johnny Quest was going to be made into a movie or a, a TV show and stuff. Live action Hanna Barbera um, cartoons come come into life. They've made some Flintstones. They've done some other things. Has there ever been the idea of somebody like you know we can make Space Ghost in this age of sci fi and superheroes? Why isn't Space Ghost a streaming series or a live action movie? Has there ever been talk that Space Ghost would be a movie to the big screen? Do you guys know of anything? I don't. I could look it up, but so, I. So, <laughs> I have I have corresponded with several people through the website mm -hmm. over the years. Uh, one of them was Lance Falk, uh, that did a lot of work for Hanna Barbera in the '90s, and he came up with a whole script storyline to either do another animated uh, version or to do a full blown uh, movie, uh, yeah. and. He even did storyboard art, you know, talked about different people he would like to play the characters, and it just never came to pass. And people, I think people have tried and tried. It's like Christian and I have talked, I can't believe there's not a Batman Beyond live action movie. Right. I mean, that's one of our favorite shows of all time. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we just can't believe nobody's taken that and said, we're going to do that. But um space goes is kind of in the same boat i mean he's he's been around almost for 60 years now and you would think yeah. somebody would take that because i think it would be a great uh, a great story for a movie a live action movie mm -hmm. uh, but but at worst i mean let's get let's get some more animated you know episodes yeah um, with a more you know not not as campy as the 60s you know we can be a little bit more you know i, I hate to say it, we can be a little more violent now you know and you can actually <laughs> you know beat up and punch people and you know yeah. Yeah. The special effects and CGI and the site, you know, the, the world building, I, I think you could do a good one. I, I don't know why I'll, I'll go out there and look for that, but I think James Gunn running with the DC universe and trying out some things. I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Batman uh, beyond at some point or, or building off that, those things. And, you know, maybe it's just, um, Hanna Barbera and, uh, kind of rights to things and how you can get it going. And the, the, it has a lot of age on it. And so people think it is relevant or not. Um, yeah. I, th I think with superheroes and sci-fi and space goes will be fine. Same way. They haven't done a really brought green lantern in as, as good as, as well as they, they could or, or ought or should, but um, yeah. So that's, that's my pitch out there. If anybody's out there listening that has, has their fingers in a big, well, we know three hand. people that would go see it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd be there. <laughs> Man, I would be there so fast. I'd be there opening night. Uh, oh, I love it so much. Good, good stuff, y'all. Uh, other things you'd like to recommend as we get towards the end of here? Any things in terms of around space goes or other things that you want to recommend for our, our listeners or those um, on YouTube? As they were watching this on YouTube, my, the lights went out in my office. I was sitting too still, listening intently to what Chip had to say. And so the lights went out in my office. Um, and I can't get him to turn back on the automatic light as he was talking about the movie. So hopefully lights are not out on space goes that someone cut them on and, and run with it. Other recommendations, anything out there you think people should check out as we talk about the subject and others. I mean, you can't go wrong with watching the other Hanna Barbera superhero properties here. We mentioned mm -hmm. like Birdman galaxy trio, like my tour, all of them pretty solid. Uh, there's some goofy campiness like uh, that. Like there is in space goes too. like get over it. They're worth it. <laughs> Uh, but really, ultimately, my recommendation is what we should do a next episode on, which is mm. Johnny Quest, both oh. the original. Then we need to do another episode on The Real Adventures. I love Johnny yes. Quest, even more than Space Ghost. Ah, oh, yeah, I love Johnny Quest. Man, there was a band in, in college, too, that whose name was Johnny Quest, and they were kind of like Red Hot Chili Peppers, and we wouldn't see them all the time. And and oh, I love that cartoon. It's so good. There's probably some problematic stuff in there uh, in terms of depictions of other countries and races. But anyway, um, I think you could run you could run with this Johnny Quest. That's why all those rumors were out there about about doing a Johnny Quest um, live action. I, th I think it would be great. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, Chip, how about you? 
Uh, well, there's several things. If you go on eBay, you can find uh, this is a big little book. Mm. Space Ghost and the Sorcerers of Siba 3. I don't know how much. It's probably uh, 10 bucks, maybe. Okay. Uh, but a great story. Um, then you got all kind of comics. Uh, this just came out recently uh, within the last five to 10 years. This is a Future Quest series. It had right. uh, Space Ghost. Uh, this was just uh, individual stories on Space Ghost. But then they actually did a Future Quest 12, 12 arc where they brought in all of the all of the Hanna Barbera Super TV heroes. Remember that too. I probably uh, have those stuck away somewhere. Yeah, good so, call. You know, a great. And then, uh, of course, you, you spoke about Space Ghost being like a Green Lantern character. Space Ghost and Green Lantern had a team up. <sighs> I don't know if you were aware of that. I, I bet I have that somewhere dig in my box. I'm going to find these things. I'm going to find and, them. Yeah. And then the ultimate team up, Space Ghost and Scooby-Doo. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, Christian and I, I mean, it's still to this day, I watched it not long ago, uh, the two episodes of Scooby-Doo Mystery or Scooby-Doo uh, movies, the Batman episodes. And uh, oh, yeah. Christian and I used to love to watch those when when he was little. Uh, so we've always enjoyed even the Scooby-Doo team up. So we're big team up guys. And of course, this is a good one. If you, if you want to know kind of history of Space Ghost uh, Tune Magazine, which is no longer in existence. Oh, wow. Uh, this is issue number three. Basically goes over the history of Space Ghost episode guide. Uh, I think it also does uh, Space Ghost Coast to Coast as well. Nice. Uh, but, I mean, you can type in Space Ghost had all kind of merchandise back in the 60s that you could still go on eBay and find puzzles, coloring books. I mean, if you know, if you're a geek like me, I mean, of course, you have all these uh, figurines up here. I've got uh several ceramic models and then um several action figures now one thing that was cool is uh you were talking about the 1980 space stars uh a character that came out of that was space specter which was kind of the anti-space ghost okay well i got hit up i don't know god 15 years ago by a guy that said hey we're going to make a space specter toy how about send us some pictures of space specter so I went to that episode and, you know, picked out little clips and sent it to him. And sure enough, he sent me a few months later and sent a prototype and said, oh, here, cool. this is what it's going to look like. So I kind of semi-responsible for the Space Specter figure in the Space Ghost line of action figures. So a neat, a neat kind of story. Yeah, I'm going to try and hunt that down, too. I I, I think I need a Space Ghost uh, T-shirt to um, sport around Comic-Con and stuff. That is a deep cut that I think, you know, sometimes Comic-Cons, you have the mainstream stuff, but then there's people who try to go super deep cut with their T-shirts and cosplay to make people go, oh, that's cool. I haven't seen that before. So I, I, may, I may go, I may do some. You some actually Space could get Ghost a Space stuff. Ghost costume a few oh. years ago. I'm sure you can still do it today, but I mean, it actually looked pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, my body type is not tight my body right type's now. just not good for that. Yeah, yeah. Superhero right. look. Uh, right now, that my COVID my COVID ten plus uh, is is not looking good for for tights at the moment. But uh, you know, that's just kind of where we are. I um, another, another another cool thing is uh, you know Christian loved Space Ghost so much growing up. I actually did an artwork for him, not by hand because I'm not that good of an artist, but off of a, a machine kind of that you could project it on the wall and painted it and you know it looked really good hung on his bedroom wall for years and then when we moved his mom threw it away hurt my feelings <laughs> uh and i think yeah. one year for his birthday i actually made a space ghost cake for him oh, mm -hmm. so, so we, we, we we've we been geeking out on space ghost for a long time i i love that Cool, cool. Well, my my uh, other recommendation would go Thunder the Barbarian. I I want to do an episode mm -hmm. on on that and deep dive into that. So so next we'll do Johnny Quest and then we'll we'll have Thunder down the road. That's um it was my avatar for a while on on Discord in our Discord channel. I I you know as a again uh, a star wars fan you put a cartoon with somebody with a sun sword and he has uh ukula which is like the wookie and and then a space sorceress that looks like leia beside him and they have adventures in a post dystopia uh world apocalyptic world then yeah i'm i'm all over that it's it's super fun so i may deep dive that on some youtube um episodes and watch some of those cartoons i i love those those were great and they had some pretty cool nifty villains uh in there that you know as a kid i'm thinking back they're pretty creepy um but super fun 
Well, cool, y'all. Thanks for listening. This was super fun. I could geek out hard on this for, for a long time. It's a deep cut. It's retro. It goes back to the 1900s. But man, uh, some of the things that happen within these cartoons and the creators behind it paved the way for other properties and IPs and sci-fi. All the, you know, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, what they were working on in the comics uh, bled over into Hanna-Barbera and they worked together. There's a history with Jack Kirby with them too, sometimes using his art without letting him know or getting paid for it there's that kind of uh, uh drama behind the scenes as well but they all played off each other and the stuff that we love today uh anime sci-fi cartoons are all built from what happened with some of these uh stories so thanks for listening and uh yeah follow us on our social medias, if there's something about Space Ghost or other properties you'd like to hear us talk about or, or deep dive into, let us know. Reach out to us. We're always ready to uh, listen and hang out and geek out with you. We thank you for your support. Follow us and, and support us on Patreon. Subscribe uh, to our network. And uh, yeah, and, and always remember, the geek in me honors the geek in you.